Welcome back to my channel. In this video, we will be talking about drainage basin morphometry. The term morphometry refers to the measurement and mathematical analysis of the configuration of the Earth's surface and of the shape and dimension of its landform. One of the ways in which morphometry is applied is in the study of the drainage basin. The drainage basin refers to the whole area of land over which a river and its tributaries flow. It is called a basin because of the shape of the land, because the land descends towards the center. Another name for a drainage basin is a catchment area. And this is because whenever it rains, water is collected by the basin and its rivers. The drainage basin is separated from other drainage basins by a highland called a watershed or a divide. Notice therefore how the watershed or divide separates between drainage basin number one and drainage basin number two. The point at which a river begins within the basin is called the source of the river. A smaller stream which flows into a larger stream is known as a tributary. The point at which two streams meet is called a confluence. The main stream in a drainage basin is the largest one found at the center of the drainage basin and all other streams flow into the main stream. The main stream is also responsible for taking the water that flows into it to the mouth of the river where it ends and in many cases the mouth of the river is at the sea the streams within a drainage basin are arranged in a hierarchical pattern referred to as a stream order According to the law of stream order, all the initial unbranched source tributaries are called first order streams. When two first order streams meet, they form a second order stream. When two second order streams meet, they form third order streams and so on. So as long as two stream segments of the same order meet, the resulting stream segment is going to be of a higher order. A drainage basin can therefore be described in terms of the highest order stream. We can use stream order to calculate another morphometric element known as bifurcation ratio. The bifurcation ratio may be defined as the ratio of the number of stream segments of a given order to the number of stream segments in the next higher order. Bifurcation ratio can be used to compare two different drainage basins. 
So to calculate the bifurcation ratio, we need to first determine the number of stream orders in each, sorry, the number of streams in each order. So in drainage basin number one, we, in order to calculate the bifurcation ratio, we need to determine the total number of first order streams, second order streams, and so on. If you pause the video and count the number of first order streams, you should get 17 first order streams. These 17 first order streams meet to form six second order streams. And the six second order streams meet to form two third order streams. There is also one fourth order stream. So what we would therefore do is to divide each order by the next higher order. And we can see this in the top right hand corner. When we divide the total number of first order streams by the total number of second order streams, that is a 17 divided by six, we get 2.83. When we divide the total number of second order streams by the total number of third order streams, which is a six divided by two, we get three. And finally, when we divide the number of third order streams by the number of fourth order streams, which is two divided by one, we get two. So, in order to get the bifurcation ratio of the drainage basin, we will find the average of those three ratios. So we would add 2.83 plus three plus two, and we would divide that total by three. All right. So the overall bifurcation ratio is 2.6. All right, so what is significant or how is bifurcation ratio applicable in real life? Well, the greater the ratio, the greater is the risk of flooding. This is because a larger ratio suggests that more water is flowing in from the tributary streams into the main river. Another way we can describe drainage basins in morphometric terms is by talking about drainage density. Drainage density is calculated by finding the total length of the streams within a drainage basin and then dividing that by the total area of the drainage basin. If we were 
to apply this to drainage basin number one and drainage basin number two, we would discover that there is a higher drainage density in drainage basin number one than in drainage basin number two. A number of factors help to determine the drainage density of a drainage basin. So for example, drainage density is higher over impermeable rocks than over permeable rocks. This is because water will mainly infiltrate in permeable rocks and therefore will mainly flow beneath the surface. Whereas on impermeable rocks, they will mainly flow over the surface. And as they flow over the surface, as overland flow, then the water gets a chance to erode the land and create river channels. Drainage density is also greater where there is less vegetation than where there is a lot of vegetation. Again, this is because where the land is bare or there is less vegetation, the water gets a chance to flow over the surface and create channels. Drainage density is also greater on steeper slopes than on gentle slopes. So where the land is higher and steeper, we will have more overland flow and more rivers will be created as the water flows over the surface. Whereas on gentle or flat lands, more of the water will flow beneath the surface. And this is why in the Caribbean, countries like Barbados that are generally low areas are uh, have less rivers than places, for example, like Jamaica and Dominica that are higher and have a steeper slopes. Another factor that influences drainage basin, dense, drainage density rather, is the amount, type, and frequency of rainfall. So where we have higher rainfall, we will generally have a greater drainage density. Okay, so I will leave you with two past paper questions. The first First question is asking you to name some ways in which water can be stored within the drainage basin. So you could talk about soil moisture storage. You could talk about ground storage that is um, deeper in, in the ground, usually within rocks. And these rocks are called aquifers. Water can also be stored on the surface. Water can also be stored on buildings or on trees as interception storage. All right, the next question is asking you to define bifurcation ratio. All right, now this other question uh, is where you have gotten a diagram of a drainage basin and you're asked to answer some related question. It says determine the number of first order streams, determine the highest stream order, and determine the bifurcation ratio. Of course, to determine the bifurcation ratio, you will have to do a bit of calculation, which is why you get two marks for that. 
Remember, the first order streams are the unbranched tributary streams. So you could just jot down on the diagram all of the first order streams and you should get 10 first order streams. Remember where two first order streams meet, we have second order streams. So we have three second order streams on the diagram and we also have one third order streams. So to calculate the bifurcation ratio, we divide 10 by 3 and we also divide 3 by 1. And then we take the average. So we have 10 divided by 3 plus 3 divided by 1 all over 2. And this will give us a bifurcation ratio of 3.15. Okay, so I really hope that this video helped you. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like, to share, and to subscribe to Geography Journey.